Welcome everybody to day three, the final day of the Curse Trials presented by Team Archon. My name is Frodan. I've been joined all weekend long by Kriparian to bring you guys yes. the action, provide some commentary, and also witness some pretty fun, wacky games uh, all around this new format that's a sneak peek into the upcoming standard. So uh, it's going to be a, a pretty simple, straightforward day. We're going to have all the playoffs leading into in a single champion, uh, and we have eight players remaining here. Yep, it's going to be a single elimination, so uh, none of that lose one and maybe come back into it and recover and qualify anyway. Well, no, we're past that stage. This is single elimination. Uh, we're going to start with Saviz versus Amnesiac, then it's going to be Trump versus Super JJ, and then Strife Crew versus Oskaka, Life Coach versus Tice. Oh man, Life Coach versus his only teammate in the uh, in the tournament, Tice. That's, uh, that's a bit of a crapshoot there. But, uh, well, one of them will have to go on to the semifinals and then the final. We have seven matches for you guys tonight. And uh, it should be pretty good. Uh, just to catch up on things, the standard format is uh, the one that, well, should be uh, implemented in Hearthstone pretty soon. It's going to be um, the removal of the older sets, which is going to be GVG and Naxxramas. And they're going to add a new set. This is when all this crazy stuff is happening. And, uh, you know, the idea of this tournament is to give you know, a little bit of a peek into you know, some of the aspects, um, some of the consequences of a change like this. Um, the GVG sets and uh, Naxxram sets are not allowed in this tournament. As a result, uh, we've seen a lot of really good Druid decks, um, along with a few other creations that have, uh, you know, succeeded kind of like one ofs. Um, out of all the unique decks, um, I believe it's it's only Trump that is is the special snowflake. He's got the Warlock, right? I think there was like a one of um, Hunter, and there was another one of Deck. I don't remember whose it was. Yeah, we had one Hunter that was Clemson, and we had one Paladin that was Firebat. Oh, yeah, and they uh, didn't make it. also another special snowflake that he didn't bring the Druid, mm. and he barely didn't make it. He had a really close series against Oskaka uh, in the loser's bracket. Battle of World Champions, but Oskaka was able to edge him out narrowly in advance uh, another sleeper deck or sleeper class rather that we've been uh haven't haven't really paid attention to too much in the very beginning of the tournament but uh very quickly picking up um, some attention is rogue it's presented here by uh, amnesiac and several other people who have made it farther in the tournament also have done the same oskaka super jj um we, we saw a lot of people try to bring it as well. Uh, so it's, it's a really interesting dynamic because we've seen some people favor the control side of stuff, the dragons and the priests and the warriors. Uh, and also some of these combo miracle decks could be making a comeback here. Yeah, the, uh, the, the miracle decks have worked out reasonably well. Um, out of the other classes, though, there's, there's a bit of variety as well. While Druid seems to have just the, the basic ladder list, as most of the ladder Druid decks that you see these days don't really have any GVG cards or Naxxramas cards of any real value. Um, there's the Violet Teacher variation, but it's still basically the same deck. But uh, there is a lot of variation in some of the other classes. And uh, we see that Saviz is uh, queuing up with Priest going into the first game here. And he is running um, a very combo-driven deck. He's got the Akanize, he's got uh, all the crazy healing effects that combo with the Akanai, and he's got the Injured Blade Master to um, kind of receive some of those uh, some of those effects as well. We see the Earthen Ring Farseer on the, uh, on the Rogue side, in, in Amnesiac's Rogue deck. And uh, that has been uh, maybe the superstar of the tournament, I'd say where uh, a ton of the very highly teched and very well put together decks are running those cards. Oh yeah, sure. You can definitely see it. Oh, is this a the turn one? Bluff. bluff. Yeah. That's an interesting small little move there. It's nothing that will have a large impact in the long run, but um, you know, it's one of those things that try to make your opponent think. I have a one mana card. It might have been a minion. Uh, was it another Twilight Whelp? You know, do I think should I play it? You know, that, that kind of stuff. It, it might not matter at at the rank that most people play as. In fact, some people don't even don't even pay attention. Oh, that's a good draw. Look at that circle heal. This this, this gets really punished by Sap, which uh, was just drawn by Amnesiac. But uh, the idea be uh, behind circle healing being used on the injured Blade Master is that you can't really normally play it. 
you have to save it with the Akanai for when the Gadson gets stealth, because this is, this is generally a very bad matchup for the priest. This is like one of the traditional horrible matchups. As a Miracle Rogue versus any priest was, uh, was always one of the worst. So and um, you, you got to take all the little chances, all the little hey, advantages that you can. Class. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty nasty to get the Vile Teacher out as well, because you can't really kill it off as a priest either. And it's going to run away with the game just in terms of board control. All these small little 1-1 one -one tokens, it's not necessarily the threat immediately this turn, but it's that every turn that the Vile Teacher lives, you're just going to get more stats onto the board. Mm -hmm. um, in wow, what a draw! Another ability to use Circle of Healing, but this time refill the hand, which is not normally uh, where you get to expect this early on. So, uh, really yeah, big moves here. It's completely gone here. I mean, there's what what can he do to clear a Stealth Auctioneer? There's nothing. Um, Saviz is, is responding directly to the threat, you know, uh, for him this turn, but. Man, I feel like with this play, it's it's so hard to win a drawn-out game. I feel like this is going all in right at the start. Well, it's a bad matchup, and a lot of times, one of the, the the train of thought in order to win bad matchups is to take risks to get ahead. And even though it's not the safest line of play or the most um, long-term thinking, you just have to try and take your chances whenever you get them. I mean, you don't really get two circle of healings as early, and we've seen we've seen scenarios where. You know, players have kept it. Even Savitz, he's kept the circle of healings, and they just have no impact later because you never draw the Akanai. So, mm -hmm. try to use it while you can. Looks like Savitz gonna <laughs> pop away really quick. Um, we also did rearrange the schedule, everybody, because I know some people were expecting Trump's match to, to start things off. But I think uh, uh, you know that's gonna be coming up second. Pretty mm -hmm. excited to see if Amnesia can advance, considering how new he is still to everybody and. and and like Hearthstone, right? People still aren't very familiar with how Amnesiac plays. I mean, he's kind of one of these um, dark background uh, players that really help Archon succeed in a lot of tournaments for a while. Uh, he's a really good deck builder, um, and a lot of people praise him for that. <laughs> I wonder if we'll see uh, the, the double Northshire and then the Greedy Trade to draw an extra card here. Looks like that is going to be the play. Saviz has a lot of very powerful combos in his deck, but um, when when the combo pieces don't work together, the cards just—I mean, they really just suck. I mean, I don't—I don't know how how to better put it. Um, you know, flash heal when you don't have like uh, an Akanai or a huge heal recipient, which is actually pretty rare. It's it's just not going to do anything. Yeah, it's a really good point. I mean. Flash Shield in itself has no impact onto the board because, I mean, okay, that's not true. If you have, like, um, an Ninja Blade Master number two, there's still uses for it, but it's like you said, yeah. in a vacuum, you know, say hypothetically you both were top decking and you had empty hands, uh, drawing Flash Shield off the top is not going to do anything. Um, so that in, that in that case, you're absolutely right, but, you know, in, some, in cases here where you can establish a firm board... Whoa, there it is! The dream. Now you can also go super greed by healing it first, mm -hmm. draw two cards, and then flash heal it, draw two more cards, and then all of a sudden you might be in a position where, I mean, you might have more cards to arc arc uh, out card the rogue. But uh, I think you have to start worrying about as the more mana comes in. Are you just going to get blown away by that auctioneer? I like the greed heal to be honest. It's it's two cards for for a little bit of tempo, oh, and it really is a little bit of tempo. We're talking about a two four taunt that just straight up dies to the four four Drake. It's true. Um, not to mention Azure Drake with spell power and rogue. There's so many easy ways for it to conveniently remove, like a backstab with just the, the hit of the dagger. So the tempo feels like it is negligible. Northshire cleric's job is definitely done. Like oh. she did her part. Drawing almost a full hand. Well, we're not off the job yet. We still got one in play here. Um, I'm not even sure it's it's going to fall. I think the Drake might hit face. I, I think at, at this point the priest has enough cards. I don't really care, do you? I guess you care then. Okay. Well, it's a valid question for sure. It's one of those things where um, because the attack as well, he missed four damage and now the Drake dies. 
mm-hmm. uh, assuming he used the Blackwing Corruptor. Um, it's completely valid to to evaluate like whether or not you get you you need that damage. Um, mm-hmm. But maybe the the Rogue feels like it has enough damage anyways, even without it. Oh man, backstab, pretty big. I got the best deal. So I, this is a pretty clear turn. You just gotta have to go for this. I don't know if you actually backstab this turn. I think you don't. There's there's base. There, there is no risk of of Akunai being a loss. You can, you don't even have to play around Sylvanas' death. Which you definitely don't have to play around in general. But the, yeah. the chance of that that auction you're dying is zero, right? Um. Oh no! The yes, Holy it's... Nova Power Word Shield. Power Word Shield top deck could actually clear the board. Yeah, Pyromancer, right. Power Word Shield, Holy Nova for three. Oh, he still can do it. Yeah. Ah, that works. He can't get punished. Famous last word. That's what you always think. Uh, you know, but Amnesiac does end up using the backstab anyways. Uh, and, and as such, because he does end up using the backstab, he draws a card, which helps him get a little bit deeper. So... He did play around this idea that he wouldn't have the auctioneer next turn. You know, Lothab is not in this format either. It's uh, it's an illegal card, so it's something that has helped Rogue significantly. Yep, flash of the minion. This is the best sequencing for sure. Flash heal being pretty effective this game. Like it's it's given him some opportunity to load up the board presence with the injured blade master. It's counted as like a, an activator for a spell when you need it the most, and this is not usually what you see, an opportunity to kill off a, a stealth catches an auctioneer. That used to be the stuff of Priest Nightmares. Yeah. Now you have a clear with a Blade Flurry here, and I think you might just want to take that, just the attack Blade Flurry, because the spell damage does one extra. Yeah, probably best to save your coin. Um... In case yeah, you pick you, up another auctioneer. You can shiv. Hmm. Oh. Thank you. Okay, he's gonna try to save the blade flurry. Interesting. It also makes sense. Blade flurry is one of your best cards against priest. Oh, he does have Sylvanas. I don't think we've seen that one yet. It makes sense. I mean, Sylvanas is such a complicated thing. Like so a lot of times, Savannah is kind of like AOE because everyone has to trade into it before, sh uh, unless you're willing to give up something on the board. Even then, it's it's like two minions are impacted by it at least. Mm -hmm. So, Savannah so does feel like it's a good compensation if you're like missing light bomb and you have mm -hmm. other stuff. But it's like, you know, how how many combo cards does he have <laughs> in his deck to make sure that he has other stuff to do? So, all right. Well, there goes the um. Pillager. While it's not a huge immediate threat, you could definitely taunt up before it, but Saviz is really trying to play the denial game. He has the card advantage right now, and uh, he knows he can maintain it if uh, he denies a lot of these spell draws. Yeah, I like it. It's a pretty smart line of play to just deny your any comeback mechanism that your opponent has. So he says, right around now, Rogue always just struggles to have cards to play. Um, it just can't be mana efficient at all. All these spells are just cards that combo with other things. So he's going to take away one of its immediate threats, plus the added bonus of your opponent doesn't get the coin if he ever picks up an Auctioneer, so it's one less card. I like it. It's a smart move. I think he has to do a uh, Twilight Guardian and a heal on the Injured Blade Master. Playing both just sets you up for a disastrous uh, big Blade Flurry. Uh, yeah, there's definitely potential still. Even though you lose the oil, there's still that threat oh, of shit. this rogue deck could have something. Wow, yeah, crushed! Priest steals one from the rogue, and that's, that's kind of a pun, but not really. Like... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the, the 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 priest here really wasn't supposed to be that quick onto the board. Um, that injured blade master play, but uh, was really huge. But the second thing that really put it over top was just the card draw from the priest. That, that drew way yeah. too many cards from the cleric. That ended up giving priest the fuel it needed. It should have been out of cards a long time ago, and he mm -hmm. was forced to play like twilight guardian into, you know, the tomb pillagers and the and that would just be really bad. Yeah, card draw is absolutely immense. Um, it is what led to what was the 
crazy draw. That uh, that flash heal with the pyro play allowing to clear the auctioneer just denied probably at least like seven cards being drawn from the rogue side, and that would have been a completely different game. So you right. know, it was it was just the right card just in time and that was only possible from the uh the greedy draws early on you know you can get away with greedy draws if your combos are you know ridiculously strong and uh, you know Saviz proved that once again with uh, uh with his priest deck there yeah it's a it's a good observation um be, because he drew so deep he landed exactly on that card so he was you know i, I guess when you draw that many cards with clerics like six plus seven plus, you're bound to hit some of those combo pieces that work well together. So end up being okay. Now to radically shift gears, Rogue is going to stay for Amnesiac while Savitz has moved on to the Shaman class, one that's been generally really good. Uh, still on the more inconsistent side compared to Druid because it feels like Shaman is a victim of being targeted a lot by some of these dragon decks. Um, not necessarily the case for Savis because he's facing a rogue, but Shaman has had some ups and definitely some downs so far this tournament. Right, it looks like this Tunnel Trog uh, is going to actually make it. For now. The rogue has to hit it once with, uh, with a dagger for it to die to an elaborate SI play next turn. Which is what exactly Amnesia what has does. to sell for it. I, I do because of the threat of feral spirits. Your opponent's on coin, and and as the shaman player with the one drop in hand and just sort of Finley, I think you're obligated to make this play. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right, let's see what the draw is. It's a good spell. Oh my goodness, that is a very good spell. So big, because if he had to prep for that, that would have been prep a cold blood. This guy's <laughs> on this three health SI, I think. Yeah, I mean, you could also make an argument that maybe he wouldn't have even used Glow Blood, just prep as, like, prep combo as activator. lack of a better coin. Uh, now, do That's... you clear, or would you uh, play the Finn lane? This is... Mm, mm, I don't know. Yeah, it, it is a bit of a decision. Uh, looks like he, he just doesn't want to burn the, the Rock Fighter. It represents so much face damage with the Doom Hammer already in hand. Oh, and uh, it's Markin' time. <laughs> Mighty Morphin Smork in time. Yeah. With the All Farseer, right. that's a pretty um, significant pickup as well. Mm -hmm. I personally it's like this uh, FaceTime. This rate play. I was thinking about um, taking it a little bit slower, but this is really cool. Uh, All in. Yeah. It, it's cool. Uh, it, it might not work in, in the exact way that Savitz, or sorry, Amnesiac wants, because Savitz has answers that doesn't require his own health to be traded. Mm -hmm. And now that Rogue's completely out of cards, he oh. might be able to just take it slow, because he's got the Hunter hero power, and Rogue's yeah. just going to be hero powering every turn, pretty much. Yeah, Amnesiac is going to have to draw very well here to continue the card draw. Um... That's a poor start. Yeah, Deadly Poison, just another card that's r like combos with stuff. Uh, I, really yeah, like Doom Hammer here. Mm. I really like Doomhammer I really like Doomhammer because um, the Rogue is unable to sacrifice the uh, uh, Blood Mage Thalmas, which denies him uh, more card draw, more opportunity. Yeah, that's right. At this point, you don't even care about the spell power. You actually want Thanos to, to cycle and die. Mm -hmm. But Rogue's on a race! Six more damage being put out here with the Deadly Poison Dagger and SI. Well, so, he's threatening uh, 7 a turn, and Saviz is on 16. So it's probably a 2 turn clock. It actually is, is looking pretty okay for the Rogue, but... There's so many draws here that could uh, that could just you know yeah the rock fighter yeah give such insane damage to Savis like Not that uh, that lava shock is uh, is perfect I think you just go face with that honestly so you can unlock two more crystals this turn by doing that giving you a hero power and then making sure that you have seven next turn so that you can lava burst hero power I guess you have two more. Yeah. So, what would you do with that extra two more mana? 
So you can do eight this turn, and then next turn, next turn is lethal. Yeah, if you do, no, you don't even have to do it this turn. You can just lava shock next turn. You have a lethal next turn. The rogue has to draw a heal or a lethal. Good luck with that. Okay. Oh. Preparation. Yeah. Worst oh, that's gonna be another one for Sabiz, I guess. He has exactly 13 damage by my count. Yes, uh, the Lava Shock, more than enough here to unlock the Commander Crystals. Um, <clears throat> really nice stuff here by uh, Savitz to get, make sure to just plan and think very carefully. But you know, this is just exactly the power of the uh, that Hunter Hero power and what Sir Finley does to give flexibility to the class to give it reach otherwise. Because if it didn't have that and it just had Shaman totems, it would eight short. It would have been very short. Yeah, but uh, you know, very, uh, very well played by Saviz. Um, I think, I think it was very important there to keep the Thalnos from drawing. Uh, when the rogue is is out of cards completely, um, denying that one extra card draw is is such a big deal. You know, it, it's. Um, I know it's been mentioned several times by lots of people in Hearthstone, but there's like the. The rogue class, the miracle rogue deck, is like draw momentum type of deck. You know, so once you get like one or two key draws, they start drawing literally their entire deck. And um, you know, when if you stop that from happening, um, you're just drawing dead so frequently. So uh, I think it was very important for Saviz in, in that matchup to not play any minion. And uh, you know, looks like he managed uh, all the way to the end. Yep, uh, so now Saviz is up 2-0 very quick. And now it's going to come down to whether or not the rogue can kill the druid. And druids definitely failed a couple of times. Zlay being one of the players that he was up 2-0 and was not able to close it out. End up getting reverse swept by life coach after that crazy shaman versus priest game. Mm -hmm. Well, Saviz is running uh, Sylvanas, which probably makes his druid deck a little bit slower than most and you know that that can be an advantage against particular lineups but i think amnesiac's lineups are generally fast he's got this miracle rogue deck he's got the um the, the aggressive shaman which we've seen a lot of and i think he has a faster druid and you know sometimes a faster druid doesn't doesn't actually provide an advantage uh sometimes a slower druid is better um, but uh, it's it's hard to say. It really depends on the openers. Well, speaking of openers, Saviz is really weighing his options here. The one thing you don't want to do is get hit by a Fan of Knives on the Living Roots. You have to kind of wonder, though, is if you coin Fan of Knives, it's, it's better than if he does it on turn three when he doesn't have to use the coin. So rather than try to be mana efficient with hero powers and evaluate next turn, uh, I, I kind of like this, to attack... Oh, sorry, to um, to play the one ones. Yeah, I like the uh, the attack too. Um, you're you're probably going to play a giant Van Cleef next turn, and if you attack ahead of time because you're going to blade flurry anyway, you uh, you minimize the amount of damage you take from a potential savage roar. All right, start the sacks, boys. Oh man, there's already. A lot of combo cards with that Van Cleef, but uh, is that it? Is that what you want to go for when your Druid's hitting turn four? <laughs> turn four is the turn for silence on it, and as much as you can build up the world's biggest Van Cleef, I, I, I don't feel comfortable <laughs> making Thank Druid you. do it. At least make it do it off curve, right? What? No! You want to go immediately for the Van Cleef? No balls! Uh... They're spamming it in already, you know. Ancient of War, can you tell me? Yeah, like last week. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a warrior with like no cards, at, like nine life. Makes sense sometimes. Which I was as manly as you were, Crip. So manly. <laughs> uh, I mean, he can go for a, a, a mini cleave. You no, know. oh, man. Six, six. six. Junk, dude, junk. Where shall I strike? Well, you know, it's, it just reminds me of those days where it's like, I'm talking about old school Miracle. It used to be able to play Van Cleef for like 6-6 six, six or 8-8, eight, eight, then attack and trade into a minion, then shadow step it right back. Just like play Van Cleef has 8-8 eight, eight every single turn. Those are the days, man. Uh, 
Now, those are the days where Leroy cost four mana, and you had to play around twenty-two burst. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was it was Leroy. That entire combination cost uh, eight mana. The twenty-two burst uh, required three or four cards, but well, it did. Uh, it did eighteen, right? It was six times three, but they always did like an eviscerate at the end. Right. Right. So it was the twenty-two, or like a cold blood. Yeah. Well, uh, the Farseers seem to be pretty strong here in tandem. You might want to consider daggering up too, even though it's not as mana efficient. But you do have Gadgetzan, uh, and y your your first spell that you'd probably want to play is something like Deadly Poison. So, um, I, I think the two Farseers is just better board control, though. So I don't fault them on that at all. I'm surprised that he was thinking about going for the Savage Combatant. Um, hmm, I really like the Ancient of Lore. Hmm. Ancient Lauren 7, like, you, you can never go wrong with that. Not not when the board is like that, where he, you know, it's it's not super intimidating, but it's enough where Rogue can just start punishing by killing the Ancient of Lore and then pushing for damage, so I think he feels like it's better to play a little bit safer. Alright, well, looks like Amnesiac has hit that point in the game where he's stabilized well enough and it's time to draw the rest of the deck. It's downhill from here on uh, on the druid side, but um, 20 HP is is uh, nowhere near out of range when it comes to druid combos. Uh, yeah, it's definitely not impossible, but not likely given the hand of Savits, and this is where being aggressive as a Miracle Rogue is going to be uh, pretty easy to activate when your opponent can't kill um, the you know the gadgets and auctioneer very easily. He's both swipes. Mm -hmm. What is he going to do? Charge Drew the Claw to the face? Oh, uh, sorry, to the uh, Gadgetan Auctioneer while he's taking seven to the face? It's not going to not yeah, gonna think, reduce it to his win condition. Yeah, I think he'll have to play the Azure Drake and uh, see if he can get, um, I don't know, maybe a Wrath. <laughs> and then if he doesn't, he'll have to innervate um, the Drew to the Claw in charge mode. Yeah, I guess that's your best option. Give yourself a draw first, see if it changes, but if not, Drew the Claws a four damage removal. Not very clean at all. Oh, oh perfect. Well, oh, perfect in quotation marks. Until he sees a second auctioneer of yeah. being able to do stuff. Or even yeah, just such a lethal. It's very difficult to, to do much here. Uh, I, I think lethal is pretty unlikely. Well, he just needs to uh, inviscerate. Uh, uh, that looks like lethal, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's it's, it wasn't damage. likely yeah. off the top, but... Um, yeah, he had to draw it off the top because he couldn't he couldn't play the Auctioneer with all that shenanigans just because he had to, he had to play Deadly Poisons and, uh, you know, he only had two mana to work with otherwise. All right, great job by Amnesiac to climb back in the series. It's one game win... Uh, so it's not out of the question if you can come back in the series, but, you know, Lord knows it's going to be tough just because how do you actually come back three times against Druid? Mm -hmm. The class is known for its consistency. Savit's had one of the worst draws he could um, in the sense that he didn't have early game plays yeah, no on the roots, no ramp. Uh, the innervate came way too late, and he was stuck playing removal instead of actual minion, so... He was still doing okay. I think the main turning point in that game was, like, Saviz's plan was to just go face, 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 face. He had the rogue down to 14. He had a swipe, and he had a charger. I mean, he was he was almost there, honestly. Um, the main turning point, I think, was the double Farseer. That's, that's basically like playing a heal body. The rogue healed himself from 14 all the way to 20, and then suddenly he had a, a very threatening board. I mean, uh, two three threes when you have that much removal and that much, uh, you know, attack buffs and damage potential, uh, you know, and that was even realized. So, yeah, Farseer again, I think, was the um, was a card of the match there uh, for Amnesiac. Yeah, definitely been a, a really powerful tool for many decks. Um, however, Shaman and Druid, not really two classes that uh, have Farseer very often. They're more of the aggressive types. Mm. I mean, realistically, we might see uh, a Druid mirror to, uh, of what it comes down to, uh, of whether or not I mean, Jake can come back into the series and, and complete the reverse sweep. Uh, Savitz, though, he's he's pretty comfortable, and if it comes down to Druid mirrors, he does have that Sylvanas Windrunner, um, a, a legendary minion that is really complicated for Druid to deal with without 
the Keeper of the Grove. And, and, and most decks seem to have cycled that out. I mean, Amnijack's running like Stranglehold Tigers in his deck, right? Yeah. Here's the other thing that's very important, though. He never played Sylvanas, did he? In any, in any deck. It was never actually played. And we didn't see it yesterday. I don't think we saw Sylvanas in any of the games in the past from Saviz. Did he play in that Priest game, Priest vs. Rogue? I don't think so. I don't he think have, so either. He may have just played uh, the other things, the Dragons. Mm -hmm. I think that will actually have uh, a pretty big um, implication if it goes to Druid versus Druid. I think most likely we'll see the Keeper being used, being wasted, really, before the Sylvanas is seen. But perhaps... Perhaps here, the decision to go with the Shaman first, I think is a very good one. Uh, you get a little bit more information on the deck, and as the Shaman player, um, your strategy is, is fairly uh, indifferent of what your opponent is doing or playing. Get in there and fight, man. Yeah, it's... Uh, that, I mean... I, I definitely can see what you're saying. There's some times where you do have to shift your plan radically like passing five turns in a row mm -hmm. in order to uh, bait him into elements of destruction. So sometimes yeah. your, your game plans are a little bit dynamic. Um, <laughs> but uh, those are, you know, far and few between. It's, it's mainly, like you said, established early game board, use burden to finish the game. Elemental destruction. Speaking of the devil. Uh, oh, looks like he's going for full out board control plays. He's going to uh, take two to the face. So far what we've seen is uh, taking two damage as the druid for a kill is worth it. It's at three where, where the, the, the pro players seem to draw the line. It's not okay to take three damage by attacking to something, but two is good all day. Yeah, I think it's just the mentality of like, you know, three is the threshold where um, you're trading two mana to take two damage, and it, it doesn't feel like... Unless it's absolutely necessary, where if you don't kill it off with your hero power, you're just going to take it two more times to the face, then then you, you have to do it. But in, in other cases, you feel like if you can use a minion and conserve health, you should. I do want to mention Savage Roar is almost lethal right now. <laughs> yes, let's see. Seven... Uh, plus six is plus twelve. Uh, Nineteen. Yeah. Nineteen to twenty damage if you can squeeze in a hero power. So uh, and on the other end, I mean Shaman's got some pretty intimidating board too. No swipe mm -hmm. to easily start picking things off, so he's gotta figure out a way to efficiently remove it without giving up too much. Oh, that's a pretty good one drop. Yeah, it gives you an extra card. It's not like a one one or a like a 1-1 one, one with no ability, or, you know, even a 1-2 sometimes, it's just kind of like, a vanilla 1-2 just feels pretty weak. Mm -hmm. Well, if I'm the Shaman player here, I'm like, okay, this guy doesn't have Savage Roar, it's time to continue going face. I mean, you, you would just never, ever make this play if you had Savage Roar, right? Well, he would use it to start things off, right? Yeah. He'd use it on the board of five minions, possibly only trade one minion and go all face with the rest. Hmm. This is 10 damage in the hand plus the two on board, so 12. It's almost there. Hmm. Almost, but still pretty far. Like, because Druid is still going to try to hero power, and you never know if there's taunt minions that end up making it so that, like, because you probably won't want a Rock Rider now. Mm -hmm. So you don't know if the Rock Rider can get the guaranteed damage in. Have we seen Ancient Awards from Saviz? Like, we've seen a few of these other more unusual cards. Um, I'm wondering if he's just not running Farseers, which would also kind of be a bit of a disadvantage in this matchup. Or he's not running those taunts. It's one of those things that are a little bit absent. Oh yeah, definitely. Farseer is really good in this matchup specifically compared to other ones because you don't care too much about the late game. You don't care too much about the late game if you can't have any life to survive from that point on. You can play Ancient of War and then they just lava burst past you. Alright, well, if we see the uh, the Azure Drake come down, the Shaman is going to be 2 damage off lethal. It looks like Saviz is going to bank up on a draw. Oh, nope. That bet failed. I mean, it's not a Farseer. Farseer would have been great, but... You know, I don't think you really take out Emperor from the Druid deck these days. It was one of those cards that people thought maybe they could, but 
uh, about a couple months ago, people were like, no, like the way you often win as Druid is to get a huge discount on a lot of your Force of Nature Savage War cards. Mm -hmm. Would you love a burst now? You don't have a spell power totem, so maybe you're waiting for that. You can pass, I guess. Yeah. I like the pass. Even though you don't have guarantee of getting the spell power to on next turn, you still most likely whatever card you can play, you can. I mean, whatever you pick up, you can probably play it uh, with the mana. And Feral mm -hmm. Spirit's one of the most expensive cards, but he can still fit everything. Yeah, it looks like it's just gonna have to be Feral Spirits and Hero Power again. But uh, the Shaman is is gaining right now. Just that Ancient of Lore is gonna come down these turns and negate the um, the Lava Burst. Yeah, Ooh, as early as Lava next. Burst for six. It's two off lethal here. With Ancient of Lore inevitably coming down to heal uh, Savits, it's it's pretty hard to conserve your resources at this point. You really want to go hard because, again, now you're starting to wonder if you have enough mana for the following turn to be able to use these cards if you needed to. Mm -hmm. So, tough decisions. Ends up using a Rock Biter instead. Hmm. The force of nature is such a weak hmm. clear. He's really looking for some kind of taunt. Yeah, not to mention that he's going to die if he uses force of nature. Uh, does he? Yeah, spell power totem doesn't die, right? Oh, that's right. So, yeah. Unle yeah unless he kills spell power totem and leaves a leper no love. I, I don't think, think that's it, even an option. Yeah. Time waits for no one. What are we gonna see here? Not in Raptor. Oh, he's just gonna go off the fact that he's gonna survive. He's gonna hope that Shaman doesn't have any burst, but that ends up being exactly what he has. He just happens mm -hmm. to have all the burst. Uh, if he healed, he would have survived. Yep. Oh, but maybe not. Tough. Let's see what the draw would be. Yeah, he would have survived. All right, well, uh, this might be another one of those reverse sweeps. And Nisiak has tied it up after being down 0-2. Uh, to two. And it is going to be a Druid Mirror. And funny enough, it is going to be a Druid Mirror where Amnesiac is still unaware of Sylvanas. So hopefully uh, this, will, this will actually be realized as an advantage for Saviz. But uh, yeah, we'll have to see. I'm I'm kind of curious what Savi is running now. We've seen so many Druid decks in tournament. I think all eight players who have qualified for today, the final day, are actually playing Druid. Um, so easily the most dominant class in this uh, in this format right now. Um, it's it's kind of hard for me to remember, you know, who's playing what, what what kind of tech choices are being made. I really love the Farseer and Druid deck. I think it's what makes um, what I would say the the G two. Uh, what Life Coach Tice and RDU brought as Druid. I, I, I've, I've liked that Druid the most. Just because of the potential to uh, uh, to heal high health minions and generate so much tempo. Yeah, you know, putting something, like putting a 5-5 five five back to a 5-5 five five is just so much more impactful than like a 5-2, which can get mm -hmm. sniped by Keeper of the Grove or Living Roots. I I'm in your camp. I, I think the G2 list is probably the best for the current meta, but one thing not to be underestimated is just the power of a Stranglethorn Tiger. That card can be pretty nuts if you just sit on it and pick up a really good trade, or even in the late stages of the game. It can also represent great uh, setup for lethal. Mm -hmm. Savitz is going to be pretty unhappy seeing his opponent getting Wild Growth and the Innervate, leaving him a l like pretty far behind. He has to Innervate the Drake. Oh, okay. Oh, I like that a lot. Yeah. I mean, that basically prevents the tiger from attacking. The, the, the tiger is, is just going to get a bad attack no matter what here. Well, no, no, not no matter what. He he could wrath and come up with a terrible, terrible one drop. It's yep. always possible. Just a one health minion is fine. You can hero mm -hmm. power it down and start hitting with the tiger to the face. That's that's pretty important. So let's it's see what comes the, out. It's gonna be the pit snake dream unrealized here. 
The, the only thing, the only thing better than a pit snake, a timber wolf. <laughs> Not really. Pretty much uh, the only thing that you could have saved him from that sequence is a taunt minion like Goldshire Footman or the Void Walker. Emperor Thor is in a great way to climb back onto the board uh, because you're able to follow up next turn with Azure Drake Wrath or mm. you know whatever you want to combine it with, and most likely your opponent can't remove it for five mana, so it's a trade with the tiger. And we have a Drew of the Claw draw, which is also a very good draw here. Um, he could Where go charge and just start pummeling the face if he wants. Good thing he didn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because then the Nazi Drake would have just destroyed him, but... Yeah. yeah. I think you still Wrath for two here. And Cycle? Mm-hmm. Well, the Wrathing for four really won't accomplish anything. Um, and you still need better cards than what you have right now. Yeah, I like it for the mana efficiency because um, next turn you might want to squeeze in other plays and that one mana floating might end up being the reason you can't kill it off easily. Plus, this is... It's, it's like one of those things where your opponent won't hit your face because he realizes he probably has to trade and keep, keep that Drake off the board. Hmm... I think he's thinking if he rats now, the Druid of the Claw will attack face, but if he rats later, then the Druid of the Claw will hit the Drake. Okay, so this is basically saying you need to trade into my Drake, otherwise I'll punish it heavily. Oh, that Farseer draw would have punished it heavily, actually. Yeah. Actually, oh, no, it's man. About the same. It's about the same. It's pretty, that's, that's like a really smart thing that ends up being like, a reason why you're not just blown out on the board right now, because if he healed that thing to a 4-6, uh, you would have been forced to play the Keep of the Grove, which is just a much weaker card than whatever else you would have played. Mm. Mm, you're one mana off from killing the Drake with a uh, Living Roots Hero Power. Yeah, but... Oh, man... There's no way to remove that Drake without using Force of Nature. Um, oh, no, you can use Keeper and Living Roots. Yeah, I don't think you would want to do that. I don't think that's threatening enough. Like, if you do that, you're just going to fall behind to the next thing that's being played. I think you have to make... There, there's the point in the game where you just have to play your own minion, hope it doesn't get removed, and catch up that way. Hmm, I wonder. Okay, uh, your opponent's coming up on 7 mana, so... Maybe he plays a minion and gives you a small opening to use removal and get ahead back on board. Overall, though, this game is definitely going in Nizak's way. The, the fact that he has that, uh, that mana crystal advantage is such a big deal. He's going to be able to lure, he's going to have so many more options, and he's going to be able to play them one turn before Sadiz's. Does end up going for a board clear, and that ends up giving a pretty strong initiative to Amnesiac, who can play a much bigger minion of the Ancient of Lore. And the moment he starts picking up Savage Roar, he's just going to be back in business. Oh man, Ragnaros and Savage Roar. That is pretty insane. Yeah, and I think Savitz might also swipe this down. Um, because if his opponent ever mm -hmm. does get an opportunity to control the board and then drop Ragnaros or even just threaten Force Nature Savage or he's in trouble. Yeah. Hmm. I could see either play. I could see the MC Tech and the swipe, but the way that he's been playing, I think I think you're right, the swipe is probably a little bit more likely. It's just so much about the board because Let's just say in like a worst case scenario your opponent has a swipe and like a wrath, then how do you actually deal with it then? You're just going to be really far behind on board and you spend your entire turn removing to get mm -hmm. nothing out. Here comes Ragnaros! If oh, Rag hits man. face, I think he's... I think that gives Seeds a chance to do something. I think. Okay. It's a 2-4, the average result. That's a pretty good meeting against Ragnaros. Mm -hmm. And you can drop mind control tech just to load up the board presence, and now you're on a Savage Roar draw to win the game, assuming your minion can survive. But you put your opponent on 19, which happens to be 
the health that if any of these three attack minions survive, you'll have exact lethal. I think we'll probably see a uh, board clear with combo from Amnesiac, and this Ragnaros is just going to pummel away at the face. Ragnaros is so good when your opponent is playing one thing at, at a time. Let's see. Do you need to? You can also use Keeper, Living Roots, and Swipe, I think. Uh, you can save the Force of Nature, Savage Roar. If you use the Keeper onto the 3 2, and then you. It's one mana from clearing there. Keeper. Oh, you mean Keeper for damage? Oh, yeah, I hope yeah. to get a one health minion. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I like that. I like that a lot. It plays around the Pit Snake disaster as well. You keep her first and make sure you can swipe that thing down. Yeah, but Ragnaros might miss one, and it's much less likely if you combo defensively. But if you combo defensively, you also take a little bit of damage. So I think I like your play better. I think playing safe in this position uh -oh. is, is the best way to do it. Amnesiac's running out of time! What happened? Oh no. No! His teacher found his iPad under the desk! Wow. I don't know how this keeps happening, but Savitz keeps running into players who just keep disconnecting on game five. Or is it? I'm not sure. Or is this the next level Archon play that I'm not prepared for again? Maybe Amnesiac and Zelay have been co-conspiring on uh, on how to do next level strategies. Because that, that seemed to me like a really good clear opportunity. And now Amnesiac's dead. Yeah. Like even if he came back right now, there's just no way he can climb back uh, that that quickly. Oh no, he had Farseer, so he would be outside of Force of Nature range. <laughs> mm. Wow. And I thought Savis had absolutely no chance. <laughs> you know, you always like are, are at that point where maybe you're one game away from Legend. You're at like rank one five stars, or say you're at like eleven wins on your arena run, and you always think, man, I can't win. This is a 0% chance to, to, to draw lethal or anything like that. But there is that one opportunity where maybe my opponent's internet disconnects or you know, his modem crashes or you know, Comcast is Comcast. So. Yeah, I, I really feel like if Amnesiac went with your play, did that, that uh, damage keeper swipe play to clear the board, Ragnaros hits... F is, there's no chance. There's no chance he loses, yeah. right? No removal but, uh, for Ragnaros. Yeah, I mean, we were we were we were disconnected like on that turn, so you don't know <laughs> if he was gonna make that play. You don't know how it would have turned out, and right, he he uh, might have ended up going for combo clear, and then yeah, give up his way to win, and then you don't know. If, actually, we do technically know the next draw Savitz had uh, with the mm -hmm. second force and the the ancient of lore. Either way, it's not the way you want to go, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles. It looks like uh, we're getting word from the admins that the Savitz is just going to advance because we don't have a response from Amnesiac. I hope he's okay. Um, uh, and I hope uh, everything's all right on his camp because you, you never know with these kinds mm -hmm. of things of what happens. So I could hope everything's all right because we didn't have his camp, so we didn't get to see anything what was going on. Yeah, and some of the uh, some of the earlier games we saw the, the frozen image as an indicator to what's actually going on. But uh, yeah, you never know. Um, we're we're told to to give it another second to uh, to sort it out. But uh, I, I we, we do believe that Saviz is going to uh, uh, claim that as uh, as a victory. Man, that is that is really never lucky for Amnesiac. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty that's pretty uh, unfortunate for him. There's no way to beat around the bush on that one. But let's go ahead and just focus on uh, what's coming up here while we have a brief second to show you guys the brackets. Uh, coming up next, we have uh, another match. Uh, it is Trump versus is it Super JJ. That's right. Uh, that's going to be pretty awesome to see uh, how it's, you know, these lineups stack. You know, Super JJ is a, a pretty interesting lineup. He's got that mid-range shaman. Mm -hmm. And Trump's got that war zoo warlock Without the eggs, without the implosion, it really is 24. You don't need that yeah, stuff. I feel young again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we're totally way old now. <laughs> well, well, to it, follow that, yeah. it is going to be Strife Crew versus Kaka. 
Muskaka just qualified through the decider match yesterday. Uh, made it through. It's going to be playing Strife Crow. Strife Crow, uh, I think, has fairly standard lists going to the tournament. And to follow that will be uh, teammates, Life Coach, and Tice. Um, their whole team brought the exact same lineup throughout. And, uh, well, I don't expect uh, any of them are going to play too differently. So, well, we'll see who gets uh, the best side of that coin flip, I guess. Yeah, unfortunately uh, for them, the friends become enemies. But I guess you at least guarantee a G2 player in the top four. Mm -hmm. That might be the way to stop them, you know, have G2 play each other in a tournament. <laughs> could, be, could be one of the ways. Devious. Devious. <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, it looks like we've got confirmation that that's going to be the ruling. Uh, Savitz will take the win, awaits the winner of Trump versus Super JJ. We're going to take a break. Before we do, we also want to shout out our sponsors. A uh, big thank you to geekfuel.com slash Archon. Check out that link for all that swag that you guys can get. Um, also, the Curse Network and Hearthpone, uh, they're doing a tool of the innkeeper. It's allowing you to help manage your card collection in Hearthstone. Check it out, innkeeper.com. We're going to be back uh, in just a few minutes, and when we come back, we're going to have Trump versus Super JJ. Stay tuned.